Ivana, one of the things we talked about prior was uh, getting team buy-in. This was one thing that, you know, when you're trying to get someone to buy into the culture, you need to bring them along on the bus. So tell us a little bit about your approach as a first-time CEO. So, look, I think the number one role of any CEO is to hire an A plus team and enable them to execute by setting that right culture. Um, and so I strongly believe that that comes from the, from the top. Um, and, and I think that the way you do that is by, you know, uh, as Frank said, yes, purpose and values, but you, you have to live them and, and you have to show the people that you you live them. Um, you live them every day, and then that importance of the of the why as well um, critical as, as as Frank mentioned too. You know, I just had my uh, um, you know corporate offsite with my team, and we started with a patient advocate. We actually brought a patient advocate in to talk to us, um, so that we don't lose track of why we're doing what we're doing and why it, you know, there's that sense of urgency because the patients can wait. And the other time we spent actually at our offsite was really talking about how are we gonna ensure that everybody on the team, because it's a team, right? And we all stand and fall together. How do we ensure that everybody on the team understands what are we doing, why we're doing it, what are each of our roles and responsibilities? And it's clear to everybody how the decision-making process happens, right? Because that's what really makes, uh, uh, you know, this team's functional versus non, non-functional because you can lose it very, very quickly. And, you know, it's very easy when you have a company of a couple of people that, you know, everybody's on the same page, but you start growing and we grew, grew really fast. I mean, in December at our offsite, we were 13. You know, last week at our offsite, we were 25. So how do you make sure that you, everybody, you know, first of all, buys into it and second of all, understands how they fit into and really feel part of the team? So I mentioned this to you before. It, it's really about being transparent along the way, sharing uh, with everybody what is going on in the company and making sure that there's clear communication, clear understanding, checking in on a regular basis to make sure that everybody is on the same page and also creating these within the teams, creating the cross-functional teams that ensure that the left hand and the right hand know what they're doing. So that's, um, that's kind of what we've been doing. And so far it's, uh, it's been working, but um, it's a constant constant reminder and constant, you know, making sure that, you know, as I said before, this is our bus um, and this bus is, you know, going in this direction. And we got to make sure that um, everybody is is on, on board of that bus. And the other thing that I think is really important, because I've seen this when it when you have that kind of a culture, you want to have a culture where you celebrate failures. And what I mean by that is a culture that's not a culture of blame. Because then if you have a culture of blame, people are not going to be willing to say, hey, I don't think this is working, right? And being a small company, I always tell my teams, the only advantage we have over a big company is ability to pivot quickly. And so we have to have those kind of conversations. We have to be open with each other. We have to, because we have very limited resources. We have to say, look, celebrate. You know what, it didn't work. That's okay, let's pivot. Let's make sure that we are, you know, doing things that are actually going to create value and make sure that we're still on that path to get to to patients. Yeah, thanks for that, Ivana. So um, we're going to get an audience question, but let's give you an update on where the poll stands, because I think you'll find this interesting. Like, should a first time CEO have an executive coach? Miles, the results are? A resounding 92.3% yes and 7.7% no. Yes, I remember interviewing a CEO once and he, I asked him about the executive coach and he kind of laughed and said, what's an executive coach going to teach me? He goes, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but, you know, um, so we've we've had those experiences before, but overwhelmingly the audience thinks that we should have executive coaches for the CEO. I would agree. 
Thank <laughs> you.